Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? This is Justin Christensen, the founder and host of the Someday Life podcast. And I'm here to talk to you today on this Someday Sticky Notes about gambling on yourself. Um, if you're new to this podcast, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, create a movement, a Someday Life movement, if you will, to just help you and encourage you to get out there and reach your goals that you've set for yourself instead of procrastinating and waiting for life to pass you by and basically get older and, and just never accomplish what you truly desire to do. So hopefully through the podcast, we can uh, provide you knowledge and experience from guests, some insights that I share to you to help you kind of navigate whatever path it is that you're choosing to take. So gambling on yourself. So what does this mean? How do you do it? And why do you do it? The biggest thing about this whole concept is your mentality. You're going to have to rewire your mentality and what you think and what you perceive. Okay. And so hopefully by the end of the Someday Sticky Notes episode, you're fired up and you're plotting your action plan. Oftentimes we're held back by what we're, we're held back by what we think other people think about us. On top of that, we don't appreciate how much ability we actually have as individuals. So I want to share a quick example with you that should make this point. So when I first met my wife, she was a cosmetologist working for a corporate company that paid for her, paid her hourly plus share tips. She was extremely good at what she did. And I quickly noticed how undervalued her services were to the business owner. It was obvious to me that her value was way more than the hourly wage she was being paid. Honestly, she could start her own cosmetology practice or pay a landlord to booth rent. This would allow her to easily 10x her income and enjoy a way more flexible schedule. So I brought this, I brought this idea to her and she was curious at first quickly became nervous thinking about the idea of leaving a fixed income. That's understandable, right? Also, she was nervous about the idea of having to tell her boss that she was leaving and that scared the hell out of her. Again, it's relatable. She, I, I remember her asking questions to me like, what if I don't make enough money? You know, how embarrassing would it be if I had to come ask for my job back? Right now, I'm getting clients. She said it. She's saying I get clients that walk in and ask for a haircut. I don't have to do any marketing. You know, how will I get new clients if I start my own if I start my own salon? I remember saying, "Babe, you're awesome at what you do. You already have people requesting you when they when they book an appointment. So this means they're buying you, not the name of the business you work for. They'll pay you more money to have you as their hairstylist." A majority of these people will, will catch on from word of mouth and realize that you started your own salon and automatically follow you. Okay, And as far as making enough money to pay business expenses, you can cover that with actually having less clients, doing less work, because you're keeping 100% of the profit versus 20%. So in reality, you don't need 10 clients a day. All you need is two. So as you can imagine, you know, it took some convincing and after a while, she made the jump to do her own thing. She made the choice to gamble on herself. And that led to a whole different world. So I'm going to just fast forward that story, you know, about five years. She went five years of doing her own salon and running her own business. She learns, learned the ups and downs of what it takes to be profitable how to pay business expenses, how to set up an LLC, how to just mind the business to where it was something that she was making enough money to pay bills and she was keeping it afloat and she was bringing on new clients. So she learned about marketing as well and how to grow her business. So after five years, there was a new opportunity that came to her and that was to purchase a dance studio. And it's something that she grew up doing her whole life was dancing. And she wanted to, the idea of running a dance studio was her someday, you could say. She 
basically dove in feet first, <laughs> uh, head first, excuse me, and um, has succeeded her expectations. She's been running the business for three years now. And I'm here to tell you guys that that never would have happened if she didn't gamble on herself. So that actually catapulted her to start a much larger business and she knew what to expect. But that confidence and that experience, that was all because she gambled on herself. Now listen, if you're going to gamble on yourself, you need to make sure you get the best odds possible. It's no secret casinos become very rich because the odds are always in their favor. So how do you do that, right? First, you need to be honest with yourself and reassure yourself this is the direction you want to go. If you don't have a deep desire to do it, then don't because you won't last through the adversity. All right. So think of it this way. Bull riding is fun to watch, but there's a reason you're watching. Am I right? Second is preparation. Preparation is separation, baby. The team that's more prepared always has the better odds of winning. So be diligent in your business plan. Be diligent in your marketing plan. If you're an athlete, be diligent in your diet, training, and recovery. I know when I go hunting, I make sure to start a list of items I will need a couple weeks before the hunt. This prepares me. Before recording a podcast, I make sure to have all my notes dialed in and research my guests so I can ask the right questions. Last but most importantly, don't have an exit strategy. You're probably thinking, what? Well, hear me out on this. A plan B, so to speak, is a disaster waiting to happen. There's only one plan you should have, and that is plan A. Don't give yourself a way out. Don't even put the thought in your mind of a plan B. Remember, you're trying to get the best odds you can get. Having a plan B will take energy and focus from plan A and decrease your odds. When I think about this plan A mindset, I often think about um, the pro professional rock climber, Alex Honnold. If you don't know who Alex is, you need to watch Free Solo on Netflix. It's an awesome documentary that captures him climbing El Capitan in Yosemite National Park without a rope. Now, mind you, he's done this same climb several times with the rope and has fallen several times, but he had the rope there to save him. So he wanted to push the extreme and do it without being harnessed in. It is the most insane thing that you will watch. I mean, this cliff is over 7,500 feet high. My hands, ugh, my hands are getting sweaty just thinking about it right now. <laughs> um, but talk about a plan A mindset. He either succeeds or dies. Okay, so he either succeeds or dies. That, my friends, is a plan A only mindset. Guys, when you gamble on yourself, you grow exponentially. You achieve things you never thought possible. It awakens you to a whole new world you didn't think existed. And just think about this for a second. We're gambling on ourselves every day. Your ability to drive a car is so great that you have no hesitation to drive. Yet statistically, driving is fairly risky, right? But you're gambling on yourself to get from point A to point B safely. So why are you comfortable with that? I'll tell you why. Knowledge, experience, repetition. Your plan A is not to wreck. So you have a plan A. You have a vast amount of knowledge and experience. The repetition, you're doing it constantly. And that is the same mindset that you need to have about something that you're, you're going to tackle, whether you're starting a business, maybe you're setting a big goal to go on a, you know, to do a marathon or to do a hike. It doesn't matter what it is, but you need to gamble on yourself. I'll end it with this. And I, I just want to share the absolute truth and what I feel. Okay. In five years time, 
you'll be more disappointed in the things you didn't do than the ones you did. Okay, so I want to say that one more time. In five years' time, you're going to be more disappointed in the things that you didn't do than the ones you did. Thank you guys for listening to this quick sticky note. Do me a favor. Share this episode with a friend or family member. And if you're listening to this and you have access to a sticky note, write on there right now. Gamble on yourself. Stick it to your bathroom mirror so you see it every morning. Okay, get the odds in your favor. You can check us out. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. Got some really cool stuff there, some special access to the podcast. It's at That Someday Life Podcast. And follow us on our Facebook page as well. Uh, This little audio clip will be up on YouTube. There's a lot of great videos of other episodes on there and other guests. So you can jump on there, subscribe, and get notified whenever we uh, share a new video. So thanks, guys. Live your best life, live your someday life, and get out there and tackle it.